All right, as always, you can go to YouTube channel My Medical Nightmare and see 40 plus hours video on everything that happened to me. All right, medical billing company R1 RCM will be taken private in an $8.9 billion deal announced in August 2024. Reportedly, Tower Brook Capital Partners in Clayton, W. and Rice will acquire the healthcare technology company. The Utah-based company provides services for billing and revenue collection to hospitals, physician groups, and other healthcare organizations. Among them, Ascension, deal is expected to close by the end of this year. Ascension, a nonprofit Catholic health system, is R1's largest client and biggest shareholder through an investment fund with private equity firm Tower Brook Capital Partners. I was a patient at Ascension's St. Vincent's East Hospital in Birmingham, Alabama. R1 handled the bill regarding my visit in 2019. I experienced medical fraud and negligence in my situation unresolved outstanding as of September 2024. I recently did a video showing a sampling of employee reviews of R1 RCM posted to the ND.com website. And the people that work for this company report a lot of problems and a lot of evidence of corruption. Another good website to check to get an inside first-hand account at customer and patient dealings with this company is the Better Business Bureau website. And there you will find that right off the bat, R1 RCM posts a D- minus business rating here. And one thing that I've never seen, that is employee grievances that make their way into BBB filings are that some of these are actually written by employees of R1 RCM who have issues working for this company. So here's an example from November 2022. They write, I was promised in writing a $1,000 sign-on bonus after three months of employment. My first day of work was on March 7, 2022. I still have not received my $1,000 bonus. I've asked multiple times for this payment and have not gotten any resolution. All right, so eight months, and they write they're still employed with the company. They haven't gotten their promised sign-on bonus. And looking at the concerns about R1, RCM, this is a theme you'll see over and over again when it comes to the issue of money leaving the hands of R1, RCM and either returning to the customers, the patients, the payers, the employees. There seems to be a many, many month waiting period on the order of close to a year or more. And we're talking huge amounts of money to average people out there. Here's another employee review. Again, curiously, on the BBB website, they write, I was let go a week before Christmas 2022 and was told R1 RCM was parting ways with me. The team I was on under Ascension went through a transition to a new EMR. During the transition and after R1 offered incentives for overtime, this included working through lunches, that is lunch breaks, to receive a $20 Amazon credit or a free lunch. And every two hours working overtime, the employees were to receive $20 Amazon credit. And this employee told their supervisor they were saving up their Amazon credits for Christmas. But here's the kicker. The Amazon credits were not sent immediately to the employee, so they couldn't cash them in themselves before they went through the chain of command. This employee gets ready to use their Amazon credits, goes to the supervisor, the supervisor comes back and says will not honor their accrued credits. All right, so here are a couple horror stories from patient families, customer families who have waited close to a year to get refunds on 
several thousand dollars from R1 RCM. This complaint written in June 2022 reads, My father, a disabled senior citizen, had to be transported by ambulance. Initially, his declined paying for the $2,556 for transportation to the hospital. I processed an appeal on behalf of my father, and the decision was reversed to pay for the trip. This person called, and they confirmed getting double charged by their personal credit card and never contacting this individual to start the reimbursement. I've tried to get reimbursed from the ambulance company since the appeal was approved back in November 2021. Called six times. No one should have to wait eight to nine months for a reimbursement of $2,556. Here's a similar review complaint from 2023. They write, I stupidly overpaid them on a doctor's issue and it took them close to a year to refund $2,400. I had to jump through hoops to provide them proof that my insurance company paid the bill and they were paid by me twice. Or when RCM is an offshore billing company, both entities do not hold themselves to a professional standard and make promises they just cannot keep. Then when they are caught in a vicious circle of deceit, they come clean as an offshore company with no power to escalate resolution on your behalf. After nine months of madness with the concentric circles, I had to hire a lawyer who navigated to Vituity's president and general counsel, and then and only then was I able to reach a promise of resolution and a check in hand. So here's a sample of some of the concerns posted to the Better Business Bureau regarding R1 RCM, and there's others up here. But please check this out before you do business or give your money to these people or any of their partners or team members that they work with. You've reached the Ascension System Office General Mailbox. After the tone, leave a detailed message and someone will respond to your call. Thank you. I'm trying to reach uh, CEO Joseph Impichike, and uh, he can contact me at that number, and I have a message uh, that I would like to give uh, to Ascension. Between 2018 and 2019, I was an emergency department patient at Ascension St. Vincent's East Hospital in Birmingham, Alabama. I believe I had broken my neck. I had an x-ray, two CT scans, and later an MRI looked at by Ascension St. Vincent's uh, doctors. Each time they had told me I had no injuries in this area, I knew their diagnosis was an error as my condition worsened. The area became infected and infested with parasites. By summer 2019, I almost died. I obtained my medical records from your hospital along with the x-ray, CT, MRI imagery and discovered the truth of my injury. I had broken bone in the underside of my skull in the area of the condylar canal and occipital condyle. How the doctors could have missed such a large and serious injury over multiple hospital visits is inexcusable. I believe some element of organized corruption may exist in this hospital. I have compiled over 10 hours of video documentation on what happened to me on my YouTube channel. And the name of the channel is My Medical Nightmare. I believe I may have been a victim of patient dumping uh, in the course of my seeking treatment, which is a violation of EMTALA, E-M-T-A-L-A. When I told medical staff associated with Ascension about my discovery that I had been misdiagnosed repeatedly, I was personally attacked and my psychological state was challenged. And this is reflected in medical records I obtained later. I could not obtain proper treatment or diagnosis for this injury uh, because doctors and nurses uh, that I would subsequently uh, have encounters with would only entertain what the erroneous Ascension uh, ER findings were. My mother, who was a nurse for 20 years, had the misfortune of working in an Ascension hospital. When I questioned my MRI findings involving St. Vincent's Ambulatory Healthcare Network LLC and Dr. Michael Brant Ruff, MD, uh, radiologist, in March 2019, my mother, who was a nurse for 20 years and worked in the Ascension Hospital, she was terminated from her job there around the same time. And uh, so this phone call, I challenge uh, the misdiagnosis of Ascension St. Vincent's 
East Hospital, Birmingham, Alabama, and uh, and I challenged the policy of this hospital. And uh, Mr. Peachy uh, I think you need to look into this, please. Uh, please listen to my message, look into what I'm saying, and you're free to contact me. Thank you.